Backlight bleeding is a nasty illness that, unfortunately, all modern displays that utilize an active backlight are susceptible to catching. This can manifest in two ways. The first one, flashlighting, is when you get backlight bleed in the corners of the screen. The second, also known as clouding, is when there are irregular patches of light still visible when the screen is supposed to be black. Clouding is more prevalent in larger displays, but no display is safe from flashlighting, no matter how small. Luckily for us, backlight bleeding can be treated in most cases. So if your display has caught the backlight bleed recently, here's what you should do. We'll provide a do-it-yourself solution as well, but the first thing you should do is try and get it replaced if it's still covered by the warranty. If this is the case, then it is paramount that you don't try and tickle with it yourself first, because some companies will use even the slightest sign of tampering to try and wiggle out of their obligation to the customer. Different companies have different policies when it comes to this issue, but it's definitely worth a shot. Now, if they do reject to replace or fix your display, or it's simply not covered by the warranty, here's what you should do. In order to fix flashlighting and clouding yourself, you'll first need to equip two one-handed weapons, a screwdriver and a microfiber cloth. And this should go without saying, but we'll say it anyway. Make sure you turn off the display first and give it a couple of minutes to cool down. If it's turned off and cool, here's what you need to do. First, you should slightly loosen the screws on the back of the display. Believe it or not, both flashing and clouding can manifest as a result of panel warping if the screws are too tight. In some cases, turning the screws halfway should do the trick. After the screws are loosened, twist the frame slightly and turn the display on to see if the problem is gone. If not, it's still a necessary step towards fixing the issue. The second thing you should do if the problem persists is take the microfiber cloth and gently rub the areas in a circular pattern where the bleeding appears. You should only apply enough pressure so that the reflections in the screen warp slightly. If you've done all of this and the problem still persists, try giving it a day or two. Sometimes it needs time to settle. If not, you can repeat the last bit with the microfiber cloth until all the bleed goes away. In case you want to track your progress and take some before and after pictures, the best way to do this is by making the screen completely black. You can Google a black picture or make one yourself in Microsoft Paint, but we've found that the easiest way to do this is by following the link in the description that will lead you to an hour-long video that's just a black screen. Go full screen and check the results. Unfortunately, massaging your display isn't guaranteed to get rid of the bleed 100% of the time, no matter how often you do it. In this case, the only thing left to do is to make the bleeding more manageable. This is done by simply turning down the brightness. It's far from an ideal solution since the visual quality will suffer, especially on HDR-capable displays. Still, it's the only thing that you can do, and at least it's better than nothing. All that's left is to learn from the experience and try to avoid blacklight bleeding in the future. So what are the preventative measures that you can take to ensure this doesn't happen again? Sadly, only OLED displays are completely immune to this issue since they don't use an active backlight. And seeing how expensive OLED displays are and are likely to remain, the only thing that remains for most users is to make sure that you get a display with minimal backlight bleeding. You do this just by reading the user and professional reviews before you make your purchase. And there you have it, the do-it-yourself method of combating backlight light bleeding. It's not foolproof, but it can definitely save you a headache or two. At the very least, it will make it more manageable. If not, then it's time to get a new display. And if it's a monitor you're looking to replace, make sure to check out our guide for the best ones out there in the description. In the meantime, we hope that you find this video helpful. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you did and you'd like to see more cool tutorials like this one. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.